Okay, in this lecture, a few additional problems. These, these problems will be not from your text, but from an additional text. And it will focus on non-calculations, on theory, on some of the more qualitative information and the concepts that underlie the calculations. Some of the underpinnings of projectile motion. Consider the trajectory. The trajectory is the path of a cannonball shown in figure A. Where is the magnitude of the vertical velocity component the largest? The greatest vertical velocity will be at the muzzle. It's called the muzzle velocity. That's going to be point A. It's called the muzzle velocity. Next, where is the magnitude of the horizontal velocity component the largest? Well, the horizontal velocity is constant. So it's neither high nor low. Neglecting air resistance, the horizontal velocity at all points is the same. Horizontal velocity is constant and independent of the vertical velocity, which is governed by gravity. Where is the vertical velocity smallest at D max, just beyond point B? Just the least vertical velocity occurs at point just after point B. Just after point B. Where did the magnitude of the acceleration. Where is the magnitude of the acceleration smallest? The acceleration is constant. It's 10 meters per second squared everywhere, as long as you're on Earth, of course. The magnitude of the acceleration is the same everywhere. Is the same everywhere. Now, let's see if we can get through these. I have 30 seconds to get this red. A student is playing with a radio-controlled race car in the balcony of a six-floor apartment. An accidental turn sends the car through the railing and over the edge of the balcony. Does the time it takes the car to fall depend upon the speed it had when it left the balcony? Well, does the time it take in the air depend on the speed it had when it left the balcony. No. The horizontal, the horizontal component of the motion does not affect the vertical component. It will, however, affect what? Uh, dx. It will affect dx. dx will be larger. Uh, it'll be falling the same, the same, in the same amount of time, but if vx is larger, then vx tx would be larger, and therefore dx would be larger. Next, number three, an airplane pilot flying at constant velocity and altitude drops a heavy crate, ignoring air resistance. Where will the plane be relative to the crate when the crate hits the ground? So I actually have a, uh, an example of that. Uh, now remember, the horizontal velocity doesn't change. So if the plane is flying, the, the package, bomb, package, crate, whatever, is going to be falling at the same horizontal speed, no air friction, of course, as the plane. So the plane should be right over the package uh, when the package hits the ground should be the same. However, uh, air friction sometimes gets in the way of things. The plane will be directly over the crate when the crate hits the ground. Both have the same horizontal velocity. The crate will look like it is moving horizontally while falling vertically to an observer on the ground. You don't really think it's traveling. You think that it's just, but there's a, a law called inertia. Uh, which we'll study uh, that will help you understand that a little bit better. Can you go around a curve with 
the following accelerations. Zero acceleration. Now, your speed's the same. Your speed is constant, but your direction changes. Remember, change in velocity, that is change in magnitude or direction or both. Uh, no, going around a curve causes, causes a change in direction of velocity. Thus, the acceleration cannot be zero. So that is going to be consistent with what we have learned so far. All right, next, constant acceleration. The answer is no, because your acceleration is not constant. As you're going around in a circle, it's constantly changing. Every inch you go, the direction's changing. So no, the magnitude of the acceleration may be constant, but the direction of the acceleration changes. The direction of the acceleration changes constantly. It's constantly changing. To obtain uniform circular motion, how must the, how must the net force depend on the speed of the moving object? on the speed of the moving object. Circular motion results when the direction of the force is constantly perpendicular to the instantaneous velocity of the object. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in the next coming chapters also when we do circular motion. If you whirl a yo-yo about your head in a horizontal uh, circle, uh, in what direction must the force act on the yo-yo? What exerts the force? The force is along the string towards the center of the circle that the yo-yo follows. The string exerts the force. The string exerts the force. And we'll talk about that more in the chapters to come. Why is it that a car traveling in the opposite direction as the car in which you are riding on the freeway often looks like it is moving faster of the relative velocity of that car in your car can be fast these together. Since each car probably is moving at close to the speed limit, the resulting relative velocity will be larger than the post you're on E10 or E11 or E22 out in the desert. Analyze how horizontal motion can be uniform while vertical motion is accelerated. How will projectile motion be affected when drag due to air resistance is taken into consideration, such as Tartali's, Tartali's uh, work on ballistics. The horizontal motion is uniform because there are, no friction, there are no forces acting in that direction, ignoring friction. The vertical motion is accelerated due to the force of gravity. The projectile motion equations in this book do not hold when friction is taken into account. Projectile motion in both directions will be impacted when drag due to air resistance is taken into consideration. There will be a friction force opposing the motion, such as Tartaglia's work in, uh, as I said before, in ballistics. He was one of the pioneers in projectile motion. A batter hits a pop-up straight over, straight up over whole plate at initial velocity 20 meters per second. The ball is caught by the catcher at the same height that it was hit. At what velocity does the ball land in the catcher's mitt? The velocity is 20 meters per second, where negative sign indicates down. But we don't use negative and positive, so it's down. In baseball, a fastball takes about one half second to reach the plate. Assuming compare the distance the ball falls in the first quarter second with the distance it falls in the second quarter second. Because of the acceleration due to gravity, the ball, the baseball falls greater distance during the second quarter second than the first quarter second. These we can get through. You throw a rock horizontally in a in a in a second horizontal throw, you throw the rock harder and give it more speed. How will the time it takes the rock to hit the ground be affected? The time 
the time does not change. The time it takes to hit the ground depends only on the vertical velocities and the acceleration. Only those two things. All right, next. How will the increased speed affect the distance from where the rock left your hand to where the rock hits the ground? We're still talking about the horizontal rock throw here. A higher horizontal speed produces a longer horizontal distance. A zoologist standing on a cliff aims a tranquilizer gun at a monkey hanging from a distant tree branch. The barrel of the gun is horizontal. Just as the zookeeper pulls the trigger, the monkey lets go and begins to fall. Will the dart hit the monkey? Ah, uh, the plot thickens. As they say when the plot thickens. The plot thickens. So, he's standing on a cliff and aims the tranquilizer gun at the monkey. Will the dart hit the monkey? Yes. In fact, the monkey would be safe if he did not let go of the branch. The vertical acceleration of the dart is the same as that of the monkey. Therefore, the dart is at the same vertical height when it reaches the monkey. Interesting. Very interesting. You have to take into account uh, the vertical drop if you're trying to hit an object and you're aiming horizontally. You are working on improving your performance in a long jump and believe that the information in this chapter can help. Does the height that you reach make any difference to your jump? What influences the length of your jump? Both speed and angle of launch matter. So height does make a difference. Maximum range is achieved when the resultant velocity has equal vertical and horizontal components. In other words, a launch angle of 45 degrees. For this reason, height and speed affect the range. Affect the range. Imagine that you are sitting in a car tossing a ball straight up in the air. If the ball is moving can a, at a constant velocity, if the car is moving at a constant velocity, will the ball land in front of you, behind you, or in your hand. The ball will land in your hand because you, the ball, and the car all are moving forward with the same speed. And the air in the car. And the air in the car. So everything's moving together. It's called inertia. Uh, if the car rounds a curve at a constant speed, where will the ball land? Well, the ball will land beside you towards the outer, the outside of the curve. The top view would show the ball moving straight while you and the car moved out from under the ball. From out from under the ball. Well, that, that concludes all of the lectures. Uh, that was kind of quick, but um, interesting. Make sure that you're all set. Let's remember, any notes that you take can be used as long as you take them by hand. And they can be used as extra credit and also for material on your test. Uh, take care and have a great evening.